Okay, so um, to continue the replay, um, it's a Confederate activation attempt. Ham wants to rally his units. So, um, a rally attempt is uh, subject to command and commander's rating and vision for the, okay, so rating of plus one and that's about it. There. Um, yeah, another activation. Now he wants to rally because. Uh, okay, four, five, six, seven. No, that's a random event. So the random event is eight. Arkansas information. If it's seven o'clock or later. The Confederate player has the option to use the Arkansas arrival tape if he declines, treat as no event. So we can see if the Arkansas arrives. Uh, I think the Confederates are going to think now that they want to know that the Arkansas is supporting them as they're coming up here. Um, it's going to be important. So. Let's see, uh, Arkansas arrival, table, just two dice, six roll, that's a seven, six to eight, Arkansas will not arrive, it has been scuffled and sunk. Breckenridge's initiative rating becomes naught, and his command range and points are reduced by one permanently. Ah, no, if I'd known that was an option, we wouldn't have decided to do that. So I'm going to say no, he's not going to, we're not going to go for that now because it's not critical. So we'll treat that as a no event. Um, we don't want the Reckonwich to lose heart at this point. We don't want the risk of it. So um, that's a no event. Uh, Helm rolls again. That's for his rally. Okay, that's rally so today. Rally automatically, this costs him his rally point for a turn. Okay. Okay. So, um, also, no, how am going to go for a fire action? Um, let me move this in a bit closer, I see. See what's going on. Okay, that's not so clear. I'll come down a bit. Okay. Um, oh, well, the light's not great, is it? I thought it was good today, so I thought I'd give this to go. Anyway, so Helm's here, his two guys here are flanking and um, coming at the rear of Robert's brigade here. Um, so they're going for fire action, which is a plus one for Helm's activation rating. That's it, they've got it. So now they're in the modified line, so they're at half firepower. Um, Point blank range, so the firepower is 2, so it's 8, 13 points of firepower. Roberts is in normal line, so um, he's not, there's no building cover, so he's in the open, oh dear, this could, might not be good. So Roberts, 
um, so green and Pelagus and fire that to the rear. Do they go to cat? I'm not sure. I think so, but the maximum is four shifts in either direction, so that's one, two, three. Density now, rain now, and fire now, all of now. One, two, three. So we're down the 25 to 31 column. 11. Wow, that's two strength points lost and a morale check. Morale check is six. What condition is Roberts? Regiment in. Okay, Roberts is. Um, He has his two battalions and they have taken no damage so far, so but he doesn't have stand effectiveness, so he doesn't get a bonus. I mean, normally everyone gets stand effectiveness, a bonus if they have no casualties at all, but Roberts doesn't and somebody else doesn't. Pass and Rangers don't. So we're assuming that these are greener troops or, or more jittery or something like that. Okay, so um He's the 7th Vermont Battalion A, who's 2 out of their 5 strength points. But their morale stands. Hang on a minute now, because maybe they have some modifier for being attacked from the rear. Morale check modifier. Stat of Brigade Commander, so subtract 1. Stat would be 5. Subtract, add 1, so that's 6. Take it, keep it exhausted. No. And then morale is. Oh, sorry, I have rolled a 1 dice for morale. Let me roll that again. So I rolled 22. 2. So yes, their morale is only two, but they made it. Okay. So their first taste of action, although they're being surprised from behind, they're, they're going to take it. Good for them. Um, uh, we have to roll for Robert's possible leader casualty. That's an eight. I believe that's the effect of the final page because uh, the small arms, five, five wounded, eleven killed, so that's no effect. Now they can uh, try and return fire, but that will require facing change reaction. We have to go a morale check. Ah, so we, I could leave. Oh, shoot. I could leave them as they are, or I could try and engage them. I have to try and engage them, but they might um, right one. Yeah. <laughs> so they did it. A morale of two. Wow, great guys. Good for you. So they change facing and return fire. Six points six. I just won't because they're firing. So there's a no fire. I think we can split split the fire, three points each. Let's do that. So splitting fire, okay. Seven, that's nothing. Um, and the same for them, nothing, okay. So good guys for standing there, right. So Helm wants to go for another fire action. That is a allowable repeat action. He has it. So they're not enfiladed, but that's yes, bad from the rear now. Seven, eight. Why is it 
This is the fifth Kentucky and the thirty-first Mississippi. Now they both lost strength points, so they're actually on um, four and seven. So that's eleven. And we've got six. Is one stroke point loss in morale check. Morale check is four, and the um, ammunition roll is three, which means we have low ammunition. That goes on to one of those units randomly. Those who have low ammunition before, that's a runner. Well, we can sum up. Somewhere. Um, okay. We also have to pull one together again. No ammo. That's right. No. Okay. We want to get Spence out. So he's no ammo. And he got four. Um, up, 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 down, 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 Disorder. Okay. Yeah, disorder. You can see how his, and, um, units, though the, the fire combat's not very bloody, they degrade quite quickly unless they're able to pull out the rally. Which I think is um, nicely illustrative of actual events. Okay, so Helms, that was we have one movement, rally, fire, and that was the second. That's second fire action, so that's four Confederate activations in a row. So we go automatically for one Union before returning back to Confederate attempt. Um, what's gone wrong here is the uh, they're getting outflanked, so that they might just pull back. But if they can fight these off, then they all as well, so um, who's that? That's Beans, one of Beans' fellows. Beans here, so Beans going for an activation, and Williams is going to lend him an activation point to their own range because uh, this the, we need quick action here, so they need a uh, Six or less, minus one. He has no modifier. It's seven. No, that's a random event of twelve. The Arkansas arrives. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad the uh, Confederates didn't choose that role that I rolled earlier. The Arkansas arrives. This, if this is not the one o'clock turn or later, and the CSA player has not used the Arkansas arrival table, which I didn't. Um, the Arkansas immediately arrives at full strength. Okay, so the Arkansas arrives. But eventually, that means we can now have um, both sides can have naval activations. So instead of a naval activation just bombarding onto the map, um, the naval activation can actually. Oh, look, the sun's. And so now you've got a massive shadow on the map that you probably can't see anything. So the Arkansas has arrived. It doesn't matter where they, they placed effectively. But now that um, these may be uh, uh, activated to attack the other ships. Um, but I'd rather like to hold that in the balance at the moment because it, it might sink the Arkansas quite quickly if they engage in combat against all those 
union vessels. Anyway, so that's a random event. Back to... Ah, no, sorry. That, I didn't need to roll for that because... Um, ah, that's a shame. I'll have to take that off because that, that was an automatic um, federal activation. No activation roll. Oh, how disappointing. Okay, anyway, that gives you an idea of what can happen. Um, so, uh, beans activating, it'll be a movement action. Um, range of two, command range, so his spec follow his in the range. These are in column, so um, they can change places, so. Hmm. Time's not good because you can't fire, so he's going to have to. So it takes a while to organise guys, which is great, I think this is just like how it would have been. Um, okay, he's gonna pop his fellows change formation, which are not um, movement activation. That means these are going to go into um, These guys are going to line like that. These guys will get into line. And those members will stay. I think you're not supposed to, according to the rules, not supposed to have yes, you're not supposed to have units facing different directions in the same hex. However, there's nothing to stop you having unlimbered artillery and um, line infantry in the same hex, in which case one faces a hex by and one faces a hex edge. I'm allowing a bit of interpretation of the rules there. Rather than following exact letters of the law, I think that's necessary. Um, okay, so we go back to Confederate activation attempt. Helm trying to fire. Six plus seven for his activation. That's a random event. Oh, but it's eight, not twelve anymore. Eight, the Arkansas information again. So no, we don't want to roll for the Arkansas. We don't let that in there. Theoretical earlier roll. Um, helm again. Five, six, seven, no, sorry, four, five. Okay, goes to the Federals. Brilliant, this is what Bean wanted. So, Bean's having a movement activation. His troops are going to take a fatigue because of that. Okay, um, one, two, because uh, they're moving through. Infantry in line moving through a building, that's two movement points, so that's one, two, three, four, brilliant, that's what we want. There we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, that's what we want. So the artillery can fire through the gap. These folks moving up. One, two, because they're moving up a level, one, two, three. Okay. Five. There are five movement points. Very focused missile. I'm going to say being stage there. The artillery. So all his, his units are in command. Um, okay. Is this visible? No. Okay. Looks like I'm going to have to scrap. <laughs> Sorry about all this, but I can only snatch moments of time when I can play and film. So I'm trying to take the moments when I can. Um, okay, that's not brilliant, but it's not too tragic. Okay, so where are we? Where's the action here? So here's Bean, the artillery under, under him, There's two battalions here, second artillery, not his artillery, but he's uh, attached to him at present. 
Great, so the unions have activation ownership, so Bean's going to go for A, firing activation. Deployed his men, move them forwards, and then with some guns. Oh, sorry, these could have moved as well. One, two, yeah. But they are, they will require another unlimber action from him or on their own to unlimber. Bean's fire action attempt. Will Williams assist? And Williams has only got one command point left to assist with. Let's say that might be necessary later. No, that goes to the Confederates. Okay. They get that reactivation. Um, and then they get the attempt. So it's going to be, whew, the heat is hot for Helm. Uh, the Confederates, they, uh, they don't have the manpower to, for a battle of attrition. So the battle has to be one of like maneuver, surprise, and capture. But the um, the the Union line has um, shrunk, and so it's becoming tighter and firmer. Uh, the Confederates may be able to punch through, but then they they could easily have units cut off without being able to sort of. Look, I think the Federals could hold back rest of the confederates on the perimeter and cut off any who tried to sort of uh, try to break through and outflank. Um, it's sort of like classic tactical dilemma. Um, so I think we, we, and, and we don't, we need the reserve, the Confederates need reserves at this point, but as you can see, all their units are on the perimeter. And it's all reserves we might keep in fact here. Let's pull them up. So that's what we'll do. This is the uh, Confederate reactivation void. Who is, can you see that? I think I'm off camera anyway. He's coming up. One, two, one. Two, three, four. He's on. One, two, five. He's got a balance. He's not even there. He's got a balance. Brigade. Um. Next. Is a Confederate activation attempt. Um, what do we have? And what can you see on camera? I'm going to come out a bit. Oops, going in. So, uh, Boyd just moved up in. Um, Modified line there. Um, so we've got, we've got Clement, Kentucky here, ensconced in the block. We've got this daring manoeuvre. This is a federal unit. We've got this daring manoeuvre by Helms Brigade, blocked by Bean running up. Opportunity. Smith is unsure whether to. Come around here, or he really he needs to press here. And Shields is going to, he's got, he's trailing artillery, so he's, he, and it, it's impossible to sort of outflank around there. Um, these units are in danger of, they need to hold the flanks, so you don't want the rules forming back around there. So it feels just like we have no reserves. And we should have a situation like this. Um, I think 
Uh, what, how are Thompson's men faring? Uh, Thompson's men are fatigued. Um, Alan's men are fatigued as well. Is there any more action, any more movement or assault from these guys is going to matter the riot. So the Confederate and, and the Union fellows are fairly unactivated, at least in terms of movement. So the Confederates now are going to have to pray that on activation rolls something happens and the game turn ends. Um, or else the um, Federals are going to be gaining the initiative here in terms of being able to manoeuvre, whereas the Confederates are pretty much all spent for this three quarters of an hour turn. Um, so, uh, I don't think Helm wants to stand out there in the midst of a nasty firefight. So, I think he's against artillery and all of them. So, I think he's going to withdraw, which well, his guys are fatigued, so they can't smoke them off. We need some artillery. Where's the goddamn artillery? Okay. There's artillery here. We're not in action. Okay. Um. Right, Smith is up to you. There's going to be a movement, Smith, movement action. No, Smith, um. Formation change action to um, deliver that artillery. Okay, Smith gets, he has no bonus. Really. So seven, that's a run roll of eight, which I think we know is a Arkansas information. We can treat as a no event. Again, over to Smith. Again, same, that same result. Okay. Smith again. Seven, eight, would you believe it? Seven and eight, three times in a row. So, yeah, come on, wake up. Cannons on the roll. No, goes for federals. Okay, so, um, and I think what we're going to have is these guys are pressed, badly pressed, they're in danger of being overrun. Equally, they need reserves to support them if they're going to stop. They need overrunning of their artillery here. Um, I believe this artillery, yes, this artillery could fire here through this. Let me zoom up so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see the facing is important. This artillery is facing out this way. So it could fire through these buildings, like loosely um, packed buildings at the supply. Uh, this artillery could fire through to Thompson's um, regiment here, who are on 3rd Street, but not in... What I'm trying to say is that it's these urban blocks block line of sight, um, whereas partial blocks don't. Partial blocks are the white blocks. So this artillery could fire here, and this artillery could try and change facing and fire. Or it could just fire. Okay, so Clark's going to go for a fire action. All his artillery, all, all his attached artillery. Um, yeah, what was that? Yeah, so that's general activation, fire activation. Okay, so what do we have there? We have the um, second Massachusetts B battery of three inch rifles. TB, I don't know what TB stands for. 
at one two hex range a six strength multiplier so that would be 12 points um Thompson's brigade is not the regiment is not massive it's not tiny so there's no density adjustment um where are we 12 points minus one I'm not sure if the terrain effects are cumulative, so for example, if, if you fire through two, the one set of blocks and into another, if it's minus two shifts on the fire column. Uh, I'll just, um, let's say it's yes, because that seems to make sense. So, 12. Um, certainly the canister is going to be increasingly ineffective as it's 